Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome in. My name is Gabby with Arizona Science Center, and thank you so much for joining us today for our 1 p.m. demonstration on sustainability. So today we're going to think a little bit green and talk about what sustainability is and a few of the fields inside of it. So start thinking already. What do you know about sustainability? What does it mean to you? So in general, sustainability is the study of keeping natural systems diverse, in function, in balance, and also how we keep our actions and resources in balance so that we can sustain and conserve all of our resources and the beautiful things this planet has to offer for future generations. The cool thing about sustainability is it has so many topics inside of it, economics and social development and environmental protection and science. So we're going to do three experiments today that you guys can do at home, and we're going to focus on water and waste, but there's a lot of other issues in sustainability like pollution, overfishing, um, and lots of different things that go on with natural systems. So first of all, we're going to talk about water. Delicious, tasty cups of water are always very refreshing every day. What do you use water for every day? Start thinking about those things. When you wake up in the morning, maybe you take a shower and wash your hands, flush the toilet, we drink, we eat, we cook, we bathe, we wash our cars, we water our yawns, our lawns. There's lots of things that we use water for, but there's not as, many, as much water on Earth as you'd think. So our Earth is covered in 70% of water. That's most of it. But 97% of that is all kept up in salt water. And besides that, only 2% of that is 2% of that is that's not included is frozen in glaciers and things like that. And then less than 1% of all the water on Earth is fresh water available for us to drink. So there's a lot of other ways we can get water, but um, most of our fresh water, we need to make sure that it's clean and not polluted, that we're taking care of our water and conserving it for all the populations. It's not just us that drinks water, right? It's plants and animals and their environments that depend on it too. So we're going to do a little experiment on water filtration to learn about what kind of processes go into keeping our water safe. So think about when your water comes out of the tap. It's clear. It's good for drinking, right? doesn't quite look like this. So we need to keep contaminants out of water. No bacteria and bad microbes, no chemicals and pollution, no chunks of dirt or anything into our drinking water. So there's environmental scientists who work on water pollution and keeping our water clean. So this here is a little water filtration system that you can make at home with tons of different materials. I didn't have all the materials, but I made um, kind of one of my very own. So all you're going to need is a two liter, a recycled two liter bottle, and you're going to want to cut it in half and flip it upside down. Now the bottom of your water filter, you want it to be porous enough for the water to come through. So this is just a thin piece of an old t-shirt tied around the end. You can use other pieces of cloth. And then you want to make some layers in your water. So if you're adding polluted water in, you have to find different ways to filter that. So start with kind of big grainy filters at the top leading down to smaller grains. You can use soil and grass if you're going for a more natural filter. If you have pieces of charcoal, you can use that. That takes out chemical contaminants. So I just have a layer of dirt, grass, and cotton balls. So I'm going to start to let this filter. If you want to kind of make your own uh, polluted water, you can use water and um, Italian dressing. That kind of gives it the illusion of polluted water. So it's taking a little bit, but it's starting to filter through, and it's missing a lot of the chunks that I had before. So you can see my layers are working well. They're absorbing. They're keeping different contaminants out of it in each individual layer. Now, just as a warning, if you're doing this experiment at home, again, we are not professional water quality scientists, so do not drink your... Um, contents at the very end. Leave that up for uh, 
environmental scientists to work for you. Um, and then you might also see water filtration around us if you've ever used a life straw or if you have a filter on your refrigerator or your faucet. So it's, again, it's really important for us to keep the little water that we have here on Earth clean. So this is one that you can do at home to try and start thinking about pollutants in your water and why it's important to keep it clean. Now, with water, there's other contaminants and pollutants, and a lot of times trash ends up in waterways, so rivers and streams and oceans. It's estimated that 8 million tons of plastic ends up in the ocean every year. So we make a lot of waste. Americans, on average, generate 4.4 pounds of trash every day. That's just for one person every day. So imagine all of the people that live here in the United States. So what can we do? There's so much trash and waste around us. The best things that we can do is reduce, reuse, and recycle in that order. So reusing is really important because not everything ends up getting recycled. So one kind of, uh, kind of craft experiment you can do is making a reusable bag out of a t-shirt. So you're going to need an old t-shirt, one that you don't wear anymore, or if you have one that you really like with a nice design, you can do that. You're going to want to fold it inside, and then you're going to take scissors and cut the collar off and cut the sleeves off. And then the bottom of the t-shirt, I tied mine already, but all you're going to do is cut about one inch strips on the bottom of your t-shirt, making sure they're still attached to the top. And then you're just going to tie them together. Like you can see here, I've tied all of my t-shirt ends. And then once you fold this inside out, you have a reusable bag and you can take these to the grocery store or anything like that. You don't have to use um, plastic bags. You can see it's just a little bag like that. So not all plastics and things are recycled like we were talking about before. Um, they say that on average Americans are only recycling 35 percent of their waste that they're making. So reusing things is the best way to prevent a lot of waste from going out into the landfill. Now, that's t-shirts and plastic we've talked about. There's other kinds of waste, too. So think about food. When we're making food, you cut off the bits of the celery that you don't want to eat anymore. But what do you do with this? It just ends up in a landfill, releases gas. Nothing really is coming of it. But there's something that you can do at home. You can do this on a big or a small scale, too. And this is called composting. So for composting, you're taking materials organic matter and things that can break down, you're allowing those to break down and then it makes a super nutrient rich solution that you can add to your garden or your lawn so you can make something useful from your waste. So to make a compost, you're gonna need a container. I don't have a lot of space in my house so this is my small compost, I'm starting small. But if you wanna do this larger scale, you just need like a big bucket or kind of like trash can, tin kind of thing. You're gonna need some drainage holes, so I drilled some holes in the bottom of mine and along the sides. And then inside your compost, you need to mix a certain kind of combination of ingredients. There's something called brown and green matter that you're gonna put in your compost. Now brown matter, is things like uh, newspaper and cardboard. These are really fibrous things when you kind of think about this. And these are really carbon rich, which is good for the plants that you're gonna be feeding this to. You also need green materials. So those are things like your vegetable trimmings, lettuce, celery, grass if you mow your, your lawn. And then you're gonna mix that in with a little bit of soil, like I have right here. All of that can go into your compost, and then you can stir that. And as it's starting to break down, organic matter is breaking down. It's releasing all the good nutrients from it. If you're feeling a little adventurous, you can also add worms, and they do something called vermicomposting, where they eat and poop good nutrients for your yard and for your plants. All right, so I want you guys to start thinking about ways that you can be more sustainable at home. What do you do already? Maybe you turn off the lights when you leave a room. Maybe you turn off the faucet when you're washing your hands. There's lots of little ways and big ways that we can be helping our environment and being more sustainable at home. Thank you guys so much for watching. Feel free to try out these awesome experiments and activities that we did today. Check out more uh, science that you can be doing at home at easyscience.org. 
thank you guys so much for joining us and have a green rest of your day.